Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Garden Obsessions and welcome to our garden. The roses are blooming and right now we're inside our little secret garden. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you know the climate and everything we're in the zone. For those of you that have, have just joined our, um, our channel, um, welcome as well. Um, we are Zone 7B living in Virginia. So it, we get pretty, um, we get a pretty good winter. Um, this winter was pretty cold and we have a very humid and hot climate in the growing season and a lot a lot of rain that's what we've we've experienced a few years that we've been living here so we are living on a military base we're a military family my husband's a marine and what you're going to see is what we get um, here on on um, Quantico base the size of living that you know that we have for our outdoor this is our outdoor space we will be showing you other areas so the roses are blooming and that's one big thing that I know a lot of you garden friends have been asking to see. Um, last time we went ahead and showed the garden, uh, the last garden tour, there really wasn't much. I think we had just what entered, yeah. I'm asking my husband, we had just entered spring, super early spring. It's been, it's been quite a, of a slow spring. So not long ago was there none, none of this. There was no greenery. So excuse the mess we are working on a lot of things still right now um but you know what let's go ahead and do it there's been a lot of rain um so far so we don't want to go ahead and not you know have any videos done that's what really stops us from pushing out videos is the climate here that it rains so much so first of all i think we should start with gertrude jekyll climbing rose so a lot of the roses that we have are david austin roses um gertrude jekyll right here just started to to flower for us. It still has a lot, a long ways to go. There's still a lot of um, buds, flower buds. But as soon as this one started blooming, that is one of the huge things about Gertrude Jekyll. One of the lovely thing is the scent, the fragrance that this rose has. It's just beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous pink. And it has a, an old, an old fragrance. So, as Ambrose is pulling back, you can see here too, we have um, Miss Olivia Austin. Look at her right there. She's gorgeous. She has quite a bit more to go. And we had very bad thrips, not thrips. Aphids, we have a lot of aphids here. A fits this this early spring, very early, even before they they had started to um they had just started to leave out. Um, we did our spraying, um, but you can tell that the leaves were attacked earlier on. And that's one thing that um, we will be talking more about as we yep. show in the future. Talk more about the products that we use in this garden and when to spray more, when you should be spraying again, because they usually like the aphids attack the new growth. So as it's sprayed already, um, they won't attack all of this, um, um, the, the leaves that have already been there for a while that have been sprayed. But the new growth is what they love and they will come back and attack. Yeah, we can show an example yeah. of, of, of new growth in a little um, bit. These have a bunch of hose everywhere and you, you know, they're all tattered up, but that's it. That's where it stayed. There's no more aphids um, on them that I, Probably might, just on the new tender right yeah, there. Yeah, you might find some new, some, some on the new tender yeah. growth, you'll find but some. You know what? You're, there's always something happening in the garden. So this is one of my favorite little areas right here that I always show. This is a, the, on the side of the wall. You're going to see a lot of the hydrangea. Let me come on this side. You're going to see a lot of the hydrangeas that we have here. We're still waiting on some things that, that might not flower this year, some things that we did lose. We'll talk about all that on other videos. Then we have this arborvitae here that it snowed so much and there was so much wind too that, that it toppled over the, the arborvitae. Um, one thing that I want to explain for, new, for anybody new to our channel, a lot of our garden is, garden, is, is container garden. So you're going to see a lot of the things here in containers. It's temporary garden, so a lot of things are in containers. So we will be fixing that guy soon because his pot broke um, as the wind pushed him over. And let's make our way to the roses because this, this one's about the roses, this video. So excuse here, this little area that you see here is where 
that little spot where you put, you know, everything that you're working on, this is what we have right here. So as you can see, this is the Lady Gardener. And she just started to put on some flowers. So as as the, the season, as it warms up, her, her blooms start to get a little bit more on the orange. Right now, this is her first bloom, so she always does this kind of pale, real pale, I'm gonna say apricot color with a yellow inside. Really, really pretty. She has a spicy um, scent. Excuse the mess right here. We're still working on here. And then this is not a David Austin rose, but this is called Pearly Gates. It's um, one of um, our daughters, our older daughter's favorite rose. This is actually her rose. And we've had it for such a long time. Um, and it does so well. This one is planted in the ground took really well and loves it. We actually have a clematis um, going up. It's going to bloom pretty soon, too. Can't remember the name of that clematis, do you? Jolly, jolly Good? Uh, jolly Good, I believe, that one. Jolly Good clematis. And very pretty clematis. I, I love to see them both when they're blooming. But, yeah, that's that, that flower is very pretty, and it continues. It's still not... It actually puts on bigger flowers than this. But like these are some of the newest, you know, the first flowers. They're not as big, but I think it's actually gonna open more. It's one of yeah. our favorite flowers. And we'll come back during the- Yeah, that the, one has the, plenty of buds all over the place Yes, we'll, we'll be coming back and showing you, like I said, not all the roses are, are fully bloomed, but we did wanna go ahead and show you because how it rains so much here Sometimes we lose our blooms right away. So we have the apple tree. Somebody, I want to talk about it because somebody did ask about the apple tree. Unfortunately, um, it was started to bloom it froze. when it was still cold. Yeah, all the buds froze on this guy. Every flower yes. on here. I had maybe two flowers. What was it? Two, three? Two, two flowers. I think I remember yeah. seeing, and I don't think we're gonna have any apples this as year. As you can at see, all, it so. put on a lot more growth than what we had last yeah. year, but it just all the buds just completely froze. It was unfortunate that that happened. But I still enjoy it because of its structure, the, what it gives to the garden. That's why I love it here, even in winter time. As yep. you can see, we have tons of lemon coral sedum down there. That's what you're going to see in the garden pots here and there. We actually took a lot of the plants into the garage because we're getting ready to yeah, start planting yeah. up containers and, you know, annuals all over the garden. Um, and then over here we have... Um, I'll head up there and you can talk from there. So right up here, her new spot. We've had her since last year. This is the Lady of Shalott, and I'm very sorry if I'm chopping up names here. Um, best way I can call, say her name is the Lady of Shalott. It's another another rose from David Austin, and I we had her on the west part of the garden, and I just wanted to bring her in here because it's it's a very fast grower very fast grower it's a short you can you can grow it as a short sh as a shrub or a sh or a climber a short climber just um, they like say short here. climber but yeah. i've i've seen it and <laughs> it's i think it's way more than a short climber this this girl can really put on a show look at that bloom right there it has kind of like a yeah i think it's a that cup right that um yeah in the center so pretty this one right here and what I love about it so much is it's fast, it's fast growing. And very thorny. Hold on. Um, and it has a very elegant look to her. Yeah. Um, her, she's, her fragrance is just wonderful too. But I have her where I can see her all the way from indoors, and she's just glowing right here. And there's a certain time of day that I just love yep. when the sun hits it, and that orange just pops against the red of the house. Oh yeah, very, very beautiful I, color back here. I especially love Especially when the sun peaks. Yeah, I'm gonna turn and you guys it, around. It, it's going to, sun. it's going to do a lot of more with growth. So I'm very excited because this this will be covered up pretty soon. I'm very confident that it's. I, I hope I don't jinx us, but no, I think I think it'll do just fine. I I'm think very it'll confident cover up that it's nice. going to cover because not long ago we gave it a very hard prune, and then. We, it, it grew so, again. So the one thing about this one is when we actually put it here, it was fall and winter. So yes. there wasn't that much sun back here, but as you can see, that's a lot of growth for not having too much sun. So yes. now that that sun, like I said, I turned you guys around a minute ago. Now that that sun peeks in through here and it gets quite a bit of sun right here, um, you start to see a lot of this growth up here starting to creep up a little bit and these canes are going to start to thicken up. So like Angie said, I, th I think it's going to cover fairly nicely here. So let me explain a little bit of the lighting. 
Um, this is a north part of the garden. So that wall right there, where you see that climbing rose, Gertrude Jack, Jack, Jackal, that one right there gets about three, maybe four hours of sun in the morning, all morning light, and, and also um, Olivia, that's the amount that it gets. And then towards this side, it's quite a bit more of sun through the day. Yep. Um, but it's all the north side, you know, of the home, and it's not that harsh of sun. Yep. Um, she does get a little bit more of that um, um, late after, like right now, like a little bit more of the later sun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that we love to see, you know, as the sun's coming down, it just looks very pretty, like around golden hour. Yep. That's what makes it look so pretty. Yep. But all this is northern, and, you know, we have a tree. We have a maple tree right here. It yep. covers the roses, and they still bloom. We still get, th these roses are really good for part shade, for yep. part sun, part sun. They, they, they're okay for a couple of hours of sun. I always say the most you want to put them at is that they get an area where you're going to get four hours of sun. Yep. The more sun, the better. But, oh, yeah, definitely. But you can still grow roses in shady areas. And that's what I love so much, how, how much bloom oh, they'll yeah. still, the David Austin roses, a lot of them will still give you even in shaded areas. Yeah, so then, before we continue, though, I do want to correct you because we did hear about this not too long ago. Gertrude what again? Oh, I can't say it. I can't say so it. So it's right. actually pronounced Gertrude Jico is from uh, a video that David Austin just put out not too long ago. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people have said it wrong. And, I and said it was Jack Jekyll. Jekyll. We, we were saying Jekyll all the time, too. Um, so it's Gertrude Jico. So interesting that we found that out. And uh, I, I just want to point that out real quick because I know we have two more we're going to show. I'm very sorry. And, like I said, if, if, if I'm chopping up the yeah, names. And just, but... like, just like Angie said, they, they, grow, they grow extremely well in the shade. But we're going to show you the difference between some of them that get sun and some that get shade because yeah. we have two more out there. So right over here we have... Claire Austin rose. Mm -hmm. And um, most of our roses are planted from, well, the majority of our roses are planted from bare root. This yes. one right here is not planted from bare root. I have heard that Claire takes a little bit more time. Oh, yeah. Um, this one's going on her second, no, third, third year. Third full year. Third full, yeah, third year. And it's been a slow one. It's been a slow grower. Um, and, and it's not from bare root. Yeah. Um, so they didn't have her in bare root. This one I did order through David Austin. Yeah. And it's been a did. slow one, but now look at her. She's. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the interesting thing growth. about this one is that me and Angie were talking was because it was such a slow grower. We only had one cane on here. I'm going to show you guys. This is just one cane that's providing all these buds that you can see here. Yeah. And so it's, it's pretty interesting that it can be that prolific off of one cane we do have a separate cane here um but that really only has one bud on it it's a very thin one but all these buds are coming from one cane so uh, i'm excited to see when she puts on more canes and, and see how many more blooms she can give us later yeah so i know we didn't you know we still have down here we still haven't fixed our pond our little pond we still have a lot to do um it's like every every spring you know um <laughs> Well, this spring, I think it was very, very slow. And I think, you know, all of a sudden from one day to another, we see a, so much green and everything coming oh, yeah. up. We've done so much cleanup, but as soon as everything started to put out growth, we have to come out back and start moving stuff around again, do more cleanup. Um, as you can see, I still have um, my violas and, and, pan, and pansies. Which is well worth it. Doing amazing still. And I, you know, it's gonna hurt to get them out soon yep. to um, go ahead and fill in with some um, summer color. But some of the hydrangeas, you know, getting off topic of the roses, I just wanted to show you, cause I know we haven't done a, a tour in a while. Um, but some of our, the, uh, of our hydrangeas are already budding up. These are limetas, yep. um, which are Annabelle yep. type of- Lots of buds, can't, of, um, can't wait. Hydrangea. I was trying to remember, it's an arborescence, which is, um, it comes from, from the originals, you know, the Annabelle type hydrangea, but this is called li um, Limetta. Yep. It's a Limetta. So there's three right here, and they, they have more of, they, they come out white, or no, does it do white it, first? It, it's, yeah, it's a more beautiful creamy white, and then it has that, Look, a that ladybug. shade of green. A ladybug. And that's what we want in the garden, guys. 
Well, can't get that there. It's in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a ladybug. I just get so excited when I see, you know, the good insects coming in. Yeah, it, it, it's more of a compact hydrangea, and it doesn't flop all over the place. That's a good thing about it. So, okay, got a mess right here. We'll be doing more videos and showing you soon. You know, we got a, a couple more um, um, roses that we will be planting this year that I'm very, very excited. Um, I'm not going to say no more because I just want to go ahead and surprise y'all um, when we plant those up. So um, what else can I show y'all before we head out of the, the, the little secret garden? I mean, that's, that's, um, I think the roses is pretty much it that we have in here until we... I just wanted to show y'all that I did move the forsythia that I had right here in the center of the garden. Oh, yeah. And I moved it to that side. And I went ahead and brought one of th this little guy right here, which is a um, little lime, st little lime tree hydrangea, little standard that I actually trained on my own. This one. Yeah. And yeah, he's getting thick right there. So all this that you see right here is not going to be here s s pretty soon. I'm on the hunt for a very nice pot for right here in the center. I'm probably going to leave her right here. So yeah, let's head out and see what's going on out there. And pretty soon we'll come back in here. And we'll do a, another tour talking about all the other plants that are starting to wake, that have woken up already that we're waiting for. So let's see who's blooming on this side of the garden, what roses are blooming. Um, we were kind of, kind of hold off to show this side till later on because there's a lot of light. But I think it's a good idea to go ahead and show you uh, because we have two um, Gertrude Jekyll roses on this side as well, climbing roses. And I think with the light hitting on this side more than indoors, that way you can see what the roses do as, you know, as their sun. So the sun is going down a bit. Plus, we are waiting for more rain pretty soon. So there's a lot of um, the clouds are coming, you know, passing by. So right now, as you can see, this one's finally resting from the sun and the roses or the flowers are starting to plump up again. They shrink with the sun yeah, because are... this one's not, you know, these are not used to being out in the, yeah. in the open with the sun. So, you know, we're under a maple tree. So because we're under the maple tree, that means that, you know, it's getting a lot more um, shade. So, but as you can see, they're plumping back up. And they look really pretty. And this one's actually putting on a lot, has a lot more um, leaves. I'm noticing that it's covering completely. And that's because, you know, it's getting a lot more sun. So I'll move a little bit back so y'all can see that right there. Because that's one of my favorite ones that is right there. And we're slowly training it to the side over here. Ambrose is still going to um, add right there something else. Mm -hmm. He's, he, what, what, um, he put some wood right here, which blended, blends in without harming the fence at all. He tied it with some wire and, and he will be doing the same towards that side. And then let's talk about this one before we move to the other side. Um, so y'all can see the other, the other climber. So this one right here is Wisley 2008. So I wanted to show this one because you know, not everything is perfect and pretty. This is a good, good um, example of why you should never have a rose or any plant, leave it in, um, let it outgrow its container. Um, this one has been in there for quite a bit, Weasley 2008, and this rose gets really big. It's supposed to have very long canes, very elegant and pretty. Yeah. And the reason it's not good to leave them in, in you know, um, in, con in small containers for a long time, once they outgrow the container, er the, this container, is because then the rose will suffer. And that's not just roses, it, it'll be, you know, any plant will do that. Um, and when it's, and when it's suffering like it is here, it's not, it doesn't put a lot of growth, it doesn't flower a lot, and then it will get sick um, very easily, you know, and attacked by, by, um, by um, insects or whatever, you know? So, yeah, it's a very beautiful rose and pretty soon we will be moving it into a bigger container. It's yep. totally your fault, this one that we left it, we left it in this, but it's always good to show, you know, yep. the, the mistakes that one does in the garden as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you that over there. There's, it's perfect lighting right now. We have the, the full sun that's hitting right now on that side. And this is also, say it right. Gertrude Jico. I always butcher the name. Um, so here it is. There's a lot more sun hitting on this one, on this side. You can tell that the, the flowers, you know, they're, they're, sh they're all shrunk right now because of the sun. 
that as soon as the sun goes away, you know, it starts, it's the, yeah. the flowers, the roses, the flowers starts to plump up right back again. And I just love the way they look on the white fence. We just got the fence not long ago and um, they, they came around and changed the fence not long ago in white. I didn't think I was gonna like it because the, the older fence that we had was a like a wooden fence which had a very pretty patina. And I really, really love oh, that yeah. old that old look. But I, I'm, I'm in love with the white one too. You know, white with pink, that's just so pretty. Um, so yeah, and it's smelling so good right now. It just smells so pretty. So then right here, before we keep going, you see the sun is, is yeah. going already. <laughs> okay, so right here we have Lynchfield Angel. She's not in bloom yet. She will be pretty soon. But this rose is beautiful in every single way. I love to just rant about her so much. Um, she, she has beautiful, beautiful flower buds. They're just gorgeous. Very creamy white rose once it opens. But I love how you can see a little bit of color right there. This rose um, is wonderful for pots because of its the, the way it's a growth habit. Yeah, it has it's a beautiful shape. Very elegant and beautiful. Beautiful. The as you can see the the way they arch. Yeah. The when the roses bloom, yes, it, it it does a little bit of a flopping, but it's in a very elegant, beautiful way. Oh yeah. And I love the leaves. I don't just, when, when we get roses, when we look for roses, we pick roses for a garden, we don't just go for the bloom. Um, we look for fragrance. We look for, um, you know, the type of lighting. Um, how does it do, you know, if it will do well in a container, look nice in a container. But I also love to look at the shape. And I also love to look at the, at the, the style of leaves that it has. Yep. And this one has a very pretty leaf. So I can talk about that one forever. We'll be back to show you how that one looks pretty oh, yeah, soon. Oh, yeah, once they bloom. Um, and then right here, as you can see, we're moving things still. So this is Emily Bronte. We just actually brought her out here this morning. We had her in the back of the garden. And um, she put on a, her oh, first she a, bloom. She has a beautiful bloom. She's a new one. We had her last, last year was the first time that she, you know, that we planted her. Yeah. And there's a little bit more of color on her on this bud right here. Oh, yeah, that one's coming out with more color. She'll get more color pretty soon. Yep. But um, the reason Emily Bronte is out here, it's because in there, like I said, is the north side of the garden. And I failed to read when we were picking out this rose that it it never said on there that it's for north, uh, the north wall. And I was wondering, I was wondering how come it didn't flower that much. And I know that, you know, sometimes it takes first year roses. It takes a little bit for them to, you know, bloom. Bed, I got to say something with David Austin roses. One has been spoiled very much um, because a lot of them bloom right away. It doesn't matter what size they are, how young they are. They would bloom immediately, just like some other. I'll, I'll let you know which one um, we immediately found out with that a lot of the roses, a lot of the David roses, um, David Austin roses really put bloom right away on their first year. So because they didn't do that, <clears throat> that's what got me to to look at it and I was like, uh oh, I told Ambrose, um, yeah, it needs to be put out in another area of the garden, west area, um, at least the west or let's, or let's go more towards, you know, the south or something. It, needed a, it needs a little bit more light. So I'm hoping in this area it will do well. Um, who else do we have? Oh, we have um, Queen Elizabeth, which she was supposed to be gone uh, yeah, we were gonna and, get rid of Queen Elizabeth, and we just can't seem to, we just can't seem to get rid of her. So yeah, she has some beautiful foliage, <clears throat> and all these roses got attacked before we even sprayed them. Uh, they started to really leaf out quickly before we even realized it, and so they started to get a little bit of damage. But as you can see, we sprayed them already, and there's not that much damage anymore going on. And but, she has beautiful leaves. Yeah, that's that's the thing, the reason I love her so much too, and. She makes her, we, we actually pruned her very hard. And yeah. I know we have a lot of plants right here, but she, she has done well. Yeah, she reaches way up high yeah, as she's, a, she actually like made a climber. About that high right there um, <clears throat> before we pruned her back. So hopefully, you know, she makes a full recovery and blooms just as beautiful. And if not, we can always move her, pot her up and just get her ready for when, you know, yep. we move again. Um, okay, so there's quite of a mess here. Um, still figuring things out. Yes. There are some roses that need to be placed in obelisk. Yep. Um, and that's a mess that we have here. Um, we're talking about, but you know, we're going to be super real in here on this video. So you're going to see things that it's like, yep. that's just wild how we have it. 
Um, so this is... Um, that is Mill on the Floss. Mill on the Floss. So we've Very... had her, what, two years? Yeah. And immediately, immediately I found out, well, we found out that she loves to push out a lot of growth. She flowers a lot too. Very yeah. pretty, pretty flower. And um, the thing is that she just grows and grows and grows. And I started to realize very fast that 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 she could. There's no stopping her. So. Yeah. So so the main focus for Mill on the Floss is to get a an obelisk again, like Strawberry Hill, as you can see. She's put on a lot of very octopus-looking canes that we want to go ahead and, and, and tame a little bit, but we don't really want to prune it back because I think it, it looks beautiful. She was pruned a little bit um, just yeah. to just to so it can bloom, but because it's just been like this, as you can see, this area doesn't have buds. Yep. This one though, yeah, there's buds how back it's there. going, yeah, it, 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 like that. It's lateral, so it's shooting out <clears> some buds. But again, the goal is to get an obelisk and, and you know make it nice and tidy with the obelisk. So this one's great for the back of the borders. That's, yep. that's something, you know, really nice to have. Backdrop. A nice backdrop, yeah. yeah. So then, this right here is James Austin. And he's going on his second year and really not my favorite in shape. No, no, it's pretty. I do love his, his flower. He's very, very pretty. Yep. Um, he's just starting to do something. But I, we pruned him back and I pruned him, I pruned him back really good too and he just i don't know he does this yeah so so lanky just that, i don't know so that just goes <clears> to show guys that not every rose that we get is, is going to be something that we enjoy or, or we're going to actually like i mean the blooms are great it has a great scent but just the way it's growing and I, I know angie doesn't like it and i definitely don't like the way it's growing just there's too much space uh in between canes and it's just there's not enough growth on the bottom and it, it sure isn't a big enough container. I just don't really, I don't know why yeah. it actually grew that way. It's starting to put on more growth. So hopefully it fills out in the middle. We'll see. We'll show you guys what, you know, what's happening. Um, another one that I'm thinking of moving from here is um, Darcy Bustle. Darcy Bustle also got, you know, they all got pruned. But um, she had gotten real big. And um, this right here. They got attacked really bad by aphids before we decided to, I mean, before we started to spray. Um, so that's why you see all this. Yeah. But I don't worry about Darcy. She recovers right away. Oh, yeah. Um, she, she, loves, she loves to flower a lot, and she recovers right away. So I'm not worried about her. Now you're going to see things here and there. We got to get that tree out of here. That's a limelight hydrangea. Found a new spot, and I'm so excited to show you guys where we're going to put <laughs> that one at. Um, and then back to the roses. Um, you want to tell them who this is? So this is uh, starting to quickly become one of my favorites. And, and as you can see, a bunch of buds all over the place. This is Teasing Georgia. Beautiful, beautiful y'all rose. It's going to explode. It's starting to explode. So if y'all remember Gorgeous. last year when I talked about Teasing Georgia, um, it's a lot more creamier yellow when it's hot and warm and, and because summer is you know it's at the end of, it's coming towards the end of spring and summer's coming along we got these hot temperatures you're going to see a nice creamy yellow but then when it's cooler um you start to get this i and i explained it last year you start to get this uh lemonade strawberry lemonade color like almost like a pinkish in there now these are here obviously that pinkish color will start to go away because it is hotter but i suspect that once it starts cooling off towards fall like we did last year we start getting that strawberry lemonade color but that's such a perfect right beautiful. there beautiful buds here i can't wait for it it has tons of them i can't wait for them to just open there is a um clematis on here um sweet summer love sweet summer love a I beautiful think that's what clematis and all that right there all that foliage right there in the center there that's yeah. all clematis foliage and we can't wait to see it that one's going to be that clematis in a deep purple with red here, here it is right here this is the beautiful. end of it but it's wrapped all around there as you can see it's all over this rose mm -hmm. and it's going to be just a beautiful sight once it starts to then bloom. down here that we have one that that suffered very much last year because of all the the rain that we were getting yeah. and um this beast of teasing georgia was just taking over it so much so you couldn't really it, this um, um um what's the name again? Malinu. Malinu couldn't really. This is Malinu Rose. I'm sorry if I didn't yep. say the name at first. Uh, Malinu Rose didn't get much sun, so yeah. <clears throat> because of this one. So what we're gonna be doing is <clears throat> pushing the canes over. Yeah. yeah. Training them back, and and that way it you know in the growing season time, so that way he can be getting enough sun. But here comes the flowers. Yep. On him. What else you got? What else oh. you wanna show off? 
this one that Ambrose has been like daily coming out here to see because I, it I, is one of my favorites. I, I come and talk to Brother Cat <clears throat> Phil uh, more often than not, uh, probably more than any other plant, but it's because I absolutely love its globular bloom. Um, and we did a video not that long ago where I talked about tying it back because it's a very, yes. has very thick canes and, and this one was leaning towards the sun. As you, can, you guys can see, you see where the sun's hitting right there? And then all along that back wall, it doesn't get that much sun, so it wants to lean this way. But Look beautiful, beautiful rose. If you're looking for an almost thornless rose, uh, this is probably one you're going to want to look for. This one makes its, to uh, its thorns on the bottom of the yeah. canes, most most of it, you know, on the bottom. And if, it's it a, if it even has any. It's a short, uh, it's a short, short climber. climber, but it will... In in hot areas when we're living in North Carolina, it actually reached the top of our porch. Yeah, it, it, so and when we say top of porch, it was, porch, full it was about sun. a good ten feet. So yeah, it was in full yeah. sun. It bloomed all the time. And this one as well has a clematis <clears throat> chlorinating up it. Let me. I'm just gonna show you there. This is Happy Jack right here. So that is how big that clematis flower gets. Um, so and there's more coming. There's so. blooms that clematis, as you can see, is wrapped all around this beautiful rose so right here. You got one that's opening up back here. Sorry if it's not focusing right. I keep sticking my hand in the way, but you got it wrapping up all the way here. But imagine those big blooms right there blooming all around this beautiful rose and buds blooming all over the place too. I think it's going to be a wonderful uh, look to this rose here. So I am missing showing y'all some of the roses. Oh, did you um, skip some? I did. It's um, some of the ones that I really, really love. They're from Pervin Winners. Okay. And they are some, they are champs. I mean... Those are kind of roses that you don't even, you don't have to do anything to them. Yep. They just they just water them, and that's really it. Yep. You don't really have to spray them. They do their thing, and that's that. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of this one. This is one of their, their um Is that uh, also a double they, red? No, this is this is um, double pink, I'm going to say. Double pink, yep, double pink, you're right. And this this was sent to us by them, too, so... By yeah. Most of the roses, all of the roses were sent to us from our friends from Prairie Winners Color Choice. Yep. So and that, one, that one definitely has clusters, as you can see all that right there, clusters of buds. Th these are type of roses, flowers that I just love to come and grab the bouquet, cut up, cut yeah. them, and just take them indoors. I, I just love those flowers so much. Yep. Um, there's another one here from Prairie Winners. This one is called Easy Oso Dub Double Red. My oh, favorite, red. favorite red rose from them. It's beautiful. Now, these are not scented. No. Um, but they are gorgeous. They are prolific. They are very um, disease resistant. If you, I always tell people, if, if you're, if, if growing ris roses intimidate you, these, go with these. Yeah, these start, are the type with, of definitely roses. Definitely start with some Proven Winners roses. Cause, uh, you won't fail yeah. with them. They, they do great. And, you know, I don't want to say anything, but we do have, you know, we have a surprise coming up. There's going to be some new, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to tell them because I'm so excited. We have received a few a few roses. Four. Four roses from Proving Winners from, from our friends at Color, Cho uh, Color Choice. Yep. Um, um, from Proving Winners. And they are the new roses for next year, coming next year, 2023. And we have the opportunity to actually, you know, grow them and review them this year, see how they do. And I'm just so excited because it, there, there is. That's all I'm gonna say. Cause there is just some, some very beautiful ones that we're gonna be able to, to see. You know, they, they are available though, on, on the website. their website. Yep. So if you wanna go, head on over to their website because they're there and you can actually buy them right now. Okay. So then, my boys, my favorite ones from all our first, first ever David Austin roses and yep. the ones that right away as soon as they were planted they're the ones that right away flowered th th these are the ones that did it for us it spoiled us and yep, we definitely. knew that we couldn't go back that we had to continue buying david austin roses um it's been raining so everything is still is flopping um it's trying to get itself back up so i'm sorry if you see everything so all yeah. over the place but this rose is just so oh, yeah. prolific it's a beautiful rose it has a beautiful flower its scent is of old rose, um, very, very strong old yeah. rose. But I always have said that I, I smell a little bit of lemon. I don't yeah. know why I always say it, it, it has that little bit of lemon. So this rose in full sun, what I love about it, it grows into a very formal shape, meaning very round, like if, like a boxwood yep. kind of, kind of um, rose, very beautiful. Um, here is not doing that. 
because we it it gets less sun on this area, the west area of the home. But we have another home on the other side, which you know it covers from the full sun hitting it all day long. So that's why it's doing those lanky canes. But the good thing about you know that we they're so lanky that we can actually peg the roses. They can be pegged, which means that you can actually twist the roses, for, form them down, bring them down into the ground for them to continue to the, give bloom. You can see some of those canes are, are pegged. We actually did this with this rose because, um, you know, Hardo Car is a prolific bloomer and has a lot of canes. And we wanted to continue to show these clusters of blooms. And as you can see, there's clusters just everywhere on this rose. And so pegging it and showing those lateral canes, <laughs> uh, some of the sunlight is going to be very beneficial. You're going to have a lot more blooms here. As you so can see, it's already crazy. What I have here, because I like to cover the canes on there and it's going to start bushing out more, um, we have some of the summer blooming alliums. Um, those are also from Permanent Winners. I cannot remember their name. I'm I, so bad with the name. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name. I'm so sorry about that. But we'll be doing another tour and talk about all these beautiful plants too. But I love to put alliums on underneath. The reason I do that is because they, the, the scent of them actually keeps like the, the beetles, uh, what are they called? The Japanese beetles yep, away Japanese beetles. and other insects as well. Um, then I have hookeras there, black pearl hookera, which is gonna start to bloom. Yep. And as you can see, it has a very pretty pink um, um, bloom that it shoots out. And it's just, it looks gorgeous against with, with the, the, the pink of the Hartle car. And then right here, what we have is a bush clematis. Um, I'm trying to see if I know the name of the bush clematis. I don't remember. It's also the name. from Proving Winners. Yep. Um, it's a it's a very stand by me. Stand by me. There you go. So I've put three right there too, and there's what some salvias, pink profusion yeah, salvia we, right here. There's one salvia. right here. Yep, just like that one there. Those are going to be coming up here inside. So I this have some in there, and bed. you know everything just started to wake up, and I got to move one of the. I'm gonna move this this. Um, what is it called? Hooker. Hooker. Yep. It's one of those, but how there there's a lot of water that that sits here. Yeah, it didn't do too well there. I'm going to push it a little more back, and it can help also that clematis right there cover the roots of that one. There's always something going on in the garden, right? Okay, so then there's we have this one right here that we've been talking a lot about lately. I forget her when we're doing um, tours. This is um, golden. No, this is jubilee celebration. Jubilee celebration. And, and sorry. It's, it's just like Molyneux where. Um, I'm not sure what what actually went on with these roses. I'm trying to I'm trying to show you guys a better look at it, but it's uh, it's not looking too healthy, not looking too great. Now, this is a very good rose, though. Yes. It's it's sorry, guys. There's a lot of noise in the neighborhood right now. This Jubilee Celebration is a very very good rose, and it grows very well in our area. For some reason, it just didn't take off that great here. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, we're playing with the idea of putting her back in a container, moving her away from here, and maybe bringing in one of the stronger colors yep. on this side. So we'll see. Yeah, and we gonna, have a lot more room here that we're still playing with. We're gonna send it to the Rose Doctor, and then we'll see what happens there. We're gonna see you know, what else we can do with this yeah. area soon. We're always playing around with this area, so we'll see what else. The sun's really getting bright. We're gonna go ahead and take you to the front and see what's going on. Um, if it's not too bright, because yep. we have one more beauty to show you. So now we are on the front of the home. This is the southern part of the home, the hottest part of the house. And, you know, I'm going to show you there's hydrangeas, limelight hydrangeas. They already put on all their growth. There's daylilies, some sedum, coral lemon sedum. It's, starting to, it's actually in flower right now, which I love so much. And then got to show off these guys down here. These are our winter containers. Um, they're still doing amazing. Um, they won't stop. <laughs> All, there, there was what, I, I, it's funny because I had a pansies in there, white pansies too, and the violas took over. Oh yeah. I tell Ambrose, that's my favorite, favorite flower, violas. So they're doing amazing. These hookers too, I love them so much. Okay, so I also have more, more um, violas. I'm so excited to show you violas, guys, because I love them so much, but that's what's been keeping, you know, the pretty around here and one of the things you know that is awesome is that how violas are just so they're just so tough can't forget the sign um, oh yes we have a fifth grade graduate so she's kind of bummed out that she didn't get to come out here right now but she wasn't feeling that great so yeah uh, she needs to take a photo with it it's been raining every single day and the sun just not working with us so so i'm gonna go ahead and let ambrose show you that beauty that's up there all right so as y'all can see from here 
that beautiful, beautiful, I'm gonna keep saying it, beautiful strawberry hill. Big, big blooms. And let me put my hand up there so you can see. That's my hand, that's the bloom. Big, beautiful blooms. Absolutely love this rose. Look at that, covers my whole She's entire gorgeous. hand. She's gorgeous. Trying to get it to focus in there. Can't do it with two, with one hand, but beautiful, beautiful rose. Sense uh, I want to myrrh. show you guys. Yeah, it's got sense of myrrh. It's just a beautiful rose. I, I, I can't express it anymore how beautiful this rose is. Look at those clusters of blooms. Now, the one thing I am upset about and I do want to talk to you guys about is we did a video not long ago where I actually pruned out a whole bunch of that in there. This was full of foliage right here. And I have no doubts that this would be full of blooms all the way around this obelisk. As you can see, there's some over there right there as well. Um, but I have no doubts that this would be all the way full of blooms all around the obelisk. But because we had that big snowstorm at the beginning of January, right? Yeah. So that big snowstorm at the beginning of January, we had a bunch of snow in here. And it kind of, when it melted, it overflowed and a lot of soil came out. And we found that when it was all gone, that there was all these canes broken. So I had to prune out most of it. Everything on top, though, was absolutely okay, though. So it's absolutely looking beautiful, looking gorgeous. And you can see all the buds up there. Beautiful, beautiful rose. So excited. Everybody that has gotten a Strawberry Hill has said how fast it's grown, how beautiful it's looking. And, and that's just great to know from one of these roses that it can grow that fast in just a short amount of time. We bought this as a bare root. Bare root, yes. Bare root. First year we planted it. By the next, what, spring, it was already... It was blooming. It was already it reaching this high. That's why I had to get the obelisk. It grew so much, but not, not only did, did it just grow, but it put on flower. That's yep. what was so amazing. Oh yeah, the first see. year, I forgot to mention that, yep. So, <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful rose. Lots of cluster blooms all over the place, and they're huge blooms too, and it has a beautiful fragrance and color to it. Just, just a great, gorgeous rose. Here we have a cat's pajamas that Angie has in a container here. Next to the rose here, and we're, we're gonna change all this up. Um, again, we're doing more video, more tour once we once we get everything planted up and with our final design of what we want here, there's a violas that uh, she wanted to show you guys. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, my time right there that we occasionally use for cooking. My blue up there. They Which did blue? really oh, well yes. even after they got all smushed up by the, yep. the snow. So that's a blue point juniper. We've had to <laughs> rotate them because the snow kind of pushed them over and they started leaning towards the sun, but they're looking great, looking gorgeous. I had to have my blue, red, and white somehow. So we've come to the end of the video, eye of the tour. I hope it wasn't too long. It seems that they always are long, even though we have a small garden. I hope that you enjoyed it very much. I know a lot of the things that we have are very temporary, meaning they're planted in containers. Um, I just want you to know something um, that, of course, every plant does a lot better when it's planted in the ground. And that's why I always tell everybody, if you have, if you have a place to plant it, if you're able to plant them in the ground roses, they will do a lot better. Um, I'm very happy, you know, with what we're able to have right now. Yeah. Um, because we move around every three to four years. That's that, you know, that's the military life for families, for, you know, military family. Um, but I'm, I'm happy and it gets me excited, you know, because when one actually is going to have, you know, we're going to have a forever home. I know that these roses are just going to do amazing in an actual permanent garden, plant it the way they're intent to in, oh, the, yeah. in the ground. So. Do you have something else to add? No, I think that's it. I, I think everybody enjoys the the, uh, the rose tours and it, it's great because I love the roses, love the way they look in the garden. That's just the beginning yeah. of spring and, and we still got to plant everything in the garden. So Everything just woke up all of a sudden. We have received all uh, most, I think what, all of our annuals. Um, we're getting ready to pot up some containers for the community here, which is always fun yep. to plant up for everyone, for, you know, families in the community. Um, we're about to plant up our garden. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of fun right now. A lot of videos coming up soon. So yeah, that's it. So we will be coming back and showing you what else is blooming with time, the rest of the roses. Um, hope you enjoy it and we will see you later. Goodbye.